Morning. Stop Monday is not Friday, so it's good. For, for all right, why don't we get started? Good morning, all, and welcome to this edition of the Cemetery Board. Uh, I'm Dan Shapiro, uh, Rosanna Rosado's designee as chair. I'm Chris Wiles, designee of the Attorney General, Eric Schneiderman. Paul Ambrose, representing Commissioner Howard Zucker of the Department of Health. I'm Lewis Polisher, Director, Division of Cemeteries. Uh, Chet Butkowitz, uh, Assistant Director, Division of Cemeteries. Mike Seelman, Senior Investigator, Division of Cemeteries. Len Green, Investigator, Division of Cemeteries. Joe Ambrose, Associate Accountant, Division of Cemeteries. Tony Melillo, Counsel to the Cemetery Board. And I would note the absolutely gorgeous bow tie. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, there okay. you go. Just All right. together. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, Folks, had a chance to review the minutes? Yes. I'm against it. Any comments? Some edits? Minor edits. Okay. You did the same thing I did. I can see in your. <laughs> God, you take the credit. <laughs> no, it's, it's, these are minor. All right. Yeah. Be more going on. No, we just no, we, both of us just knocked off recycled from last year on any legislation. And then there's little typos that you've got. Yep. I think that may actually be a direct quote. I, I'm sure it is. Yeah. Thank I, you. Even I didn't direct like quotes don't necessarily <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We would never sanitize our minutes. Um, do I have a motion on the minutes? I'll move to approve the minutes. As amended. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Great. Legislation and regulation, Mr. Melillo. Okay. So we do have some activity since we last met. Um, let's see. Let's start with... Where is this? Where is this? What? It, it, the legislation was actually circulated. Um, I don't know. Did you guys print something? Oh, hold on. Oh. It may not be in it, actually, because... Don't worry about it. I'll listen. Okay. Uh, you're the one that's changed. Notes. You're you're taking notes. Let's start with number eight. It's on the third sheet. I didn't say I'd pay attention. Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, this is actually a nice act bill, uh, intended to clarify that state regulated cemetery operations are under the sole jurisdiction of the cemetery board. Uh, in the Senate, it has advanced to third reading. Um, not too much else going on. Um, there is an amendment. I don't know if I'm going to here. There's one I missed the first go around, but caught this time. It's a keyword search, and this time I put in the word burial. I got a bill. That's actually interesting. Um, it's the last one, number 20. It's a new addition to the, the list. Uh, it would add a new section, 1518, to Article 15 of the MPCL. It would establish a Native American burial site review committee to which all discoveries of unmarked burial sites during ground disturbing activities must be reported. And they would investigate whether uh, they believe that the any remains are of Native American origin or not. And then whether or not they are, it treats them differently. It puts it in Article 15, but it excludes Article 15 <laughs> from that activity. So I don't think it belongs in Article 15. It probably belongs in Article 14, which has uh, private cemeteries uh, family cemeteries, things like that. Um, but it's uh, it, it's a positive move because we get calls all the time. You know, we just dug up this site, we found remains, and we do. And it's not our jurisdiction. Right, right. It actually, sometimes it's local jurisdiction, but this would finally create a state entity to deal with it. So far, just a one-house. <laughs> just a one-house. What I'm not seeing on here is the bill on uh, that would allow grandfathered standalones to sell, um, expand, or move, yeah, which has passed the, the Senate. Yeah. Did it pass the Senate? It passed the Senate, and it is the same as. All right. Obviously, we are not. We we the board has previously taken the position that it don't like that. Mm -hmm. To use a technical legal term. So, that's the extent of our report. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the combined report. Yeah. You'll add regulations. You'll add that one for the next one. Uh, I don't no. think we have anything going on on regulations, right? I don't think so either. Okay. So we tried to miss anything. <laughs> okay, Lewis, go. Uh, so our, uh, I should have gotten a new statistic for this. I didn't. I apologize. But uh, we've had a number of cemeteries actually use our online form. So. Um, people have found some minor issues with the paper version of the form. 
just some of the language in it could be a little clearer. We're essentially keeping a list of those things, and when the season is over, we'll look at whether we can not substantively revise it, but just tweak it a little bit for next year to make it a little clearer. Um, I, I had one such call yesterday. Those are the two major things we have going, and um, our, uh, our SharePoint um, uh, replacement to our legacy ma mainframe database is, I think I reported this at the last meeting, but it is now officially up. No, maybe it happened since. It is now officially up and running. Oh, that's we great. are no longer reliant on antiquated data that looks like the movie War Games or the video game Tron, depending on your preference, um, to keep track of cemetery data. It'll also allow us to capture such uh, newfangled information as phone numbers and emails for people, which our old system didn't allow. Um, so that's a very good thing. That's Excellent. pretty much all I got. Okay, very good. So we've got the vandalism report, Chet? Yes. Uh, for fiscal year ending March 31st, 2018, vandalism fees collected were $164,219. Uh, applications granted totaled $896,355. Uh, applications pending uh, review are $1,702,636. Of the applications granted, two were for vandalism, totaling $21,981. 31 applications for restorations or hazardous monumentation, total $864,415, and one application for abandonment um, uh, to a town was $9,959. Thank you. We only have one uh, abandoned to take care of. That's Whispering Maples, which is coming back to us for, oh. our, a, uh, for an adjustment. Mike, do you want to do it or do you want me to do it? Just a do quick precis. <clears throat> so at the Ellenberg site, they built a new uh, equipment garage that's uh, a little over 100 yards from the uh, administrative building and closer to the mausoleum. Uh, what was originally approved by the board was to have power because the old building had power. Uh, and that building is wired and has the receptacle for the panel box and everything. And the power lead that they had is uh, that they can't figure out where it came from. So they would like to, uh, and then in addition to that, the power lead coming from the administrative building to the mausoleum turns to a maple tree. Yeah. And uh, that's not appropriate. Yeah. And so they want to. You mean to that's not per code? They want to re, uh, uh, repower the mausoleum. And in doing so, they want to bury a power lead. Um, I talked to the project manager last month when we were up there, and uh, I asked if they could string a wire, you know, put in a pole. Um, it really doesn't work to put the pole in because it'd be in the front of the mausoleum. Uh, so they didn't submit that as an option. They didn't feel it was a viable option. Uh, and then, so they're going to have a, a, a buried power lead coming to the mausoleum. That's about half of this request. And then a buried power lead coming from the mausoleum to the equipment building that's already been run for power. So we're, we're going to have new power and everything. Um, we just want proper leads going to it. They're both underground, actually. Both will be underground, yes. And, and you concur in the assessment that the tower, whatever, the, you know, Stringing it in front of the mazo is not. I do, I do, and uh, it's there's uh, there's two roadways that it would cross, and there's a parking area that it would cross, and um, it, it would be at the very front of the mausoleum. So you you would have the I mean you have a maple tree with a wire going through it now. You'd have a pole which would probably be a little bit closer to the mausoleum than this tree. Um, so it would it'd be a you know, it's an overhead power line. It'd be a bit unsightly. Um, when I was there, there was snow, so I'm not really sure where that pole would go as far as what kind of... Uh, uh, I know they have a, a veterans marker area there, so I didn't really look at that too closely. But in the project man manager's estimation, it would be better to bury it either way. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't have to worry about ice storms and wind and whatnot. Why didn't this come up in the beginning? 
Are we going to get more of these then? I, I don't know why it didn't come up in the beginning. I think they assumed that they had power there because it was wired, but I, I don't know. The short answer is we might get more of these. We've already got one last month. Right, we get this um, the they're both electrical in nature. I think that's probably significant and probably likely that this kind of thing and not other kinds of thing are what we're going to get. But that leads into what our recommendation is in this case, which is not to appropriate any more money at the present time because in any project this size, there are going to be certain things that are in the nature of change orders. There may be other things they discover. Um, ultimately, this board might need to appropriate a little more money for them to finish the project. Alternatively, the board might they might come in under budget because they save money in other areas. They actually have, <clears throat> they're actually, I think, a tiny bit other than these two things under budget right now. I mean, it, it varies from order to order. But if it came in under, then there would otherwise be money to refund. So I'm anticipating that as we get very close to the end, we're going to get some kind of... Uh, What's the phrase here? Conforming the yeah. award to what actually was done request. It's a huge project, and that's more than reasonable. But we don't anticipate we're going to. We don't anticipate we're going to be coming here asking for hundreds of thousands of dollars no, more money. Of course not. Um, I actually had the same thought on Wiltwood coming up. You just said. <laughs> but in any event, well, Wiltwood the issue is slightly different. I, I understand. Uh, but uh, um, yeah, any 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 discussion on this? No, we'll approve it, but it won't be appropriate. Well, do we do we do we are we actually? I think we actually are going to need a board order for this. So you're going to have to run downstairs. I mean, I have no problem giving solace by saying that this is a, a necessary expense that we uh, that we approve. But the money, all right, will come. The reckoning will come at the conclusion of the project or when it's necessary to have that kind of... I think the towns would like to hear you say this is without prejudice to coming back and asking for additional funds as needed, if needed, to complete the project. That's, they're always available to do that. I don't think I need to frame that in the motion. That's good enough. Yeah. Tell so me. you're talking about not changing the amount that's been approved? To, to the, at the present that's, time, yes. Right. Um, you could table the request for yep. more funds so that if the need to increase the funds, this isn't being denied. That works. Um, yeah, but but acknowledge that, yeah. that, this that the, the monies can be spent this, yes. out of what's been appropriated. That's exactly what we should do. Thank you. All right. So we'll write the board order to that effect when we break. Okay. Does that need to be a board order? I don't think so. Right. Uh, I suspect that someone in the fiscal chain, be it within this office or at the comptroller, We'll want something from the board in the form of an order indicating this. In fact, I know but that's we when will the, be asked that's for when that. the payment comes due. Oh, no, because, the payment because we're going to be submitting progress payments, and this is not going okay. to be on our spreadsheet. Fine. Fine. So the motion will be, and chime in, guys, if, uh, <laughs> if it's not right, the motion will be to um, approve uh, the request for a change. Uh, uh, to the electrical connection as set forth in the application, uh, but not to adjust the appropriated amounts at this time. So to table the request table, for additional funds. table the request for additional funds at this time. Okay. Sounds good. Second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Great. Cool. Lewis you. has asked to put fish kill on the back end, so we'll go right to Wiltwick. Okay. So Wiltwick. So Wiltwick. Mr. This Reno? is yeah, this is okay. this is driven entirely by the attorney for the bank in this case. Otherwise, I would have said this is de minimis and not yep. bothered you with it. Um, so, when we approved Wiltwick's construction of a new uh, crematory, which they desperately need because they're in essentially a tin shack and running on propane in the ground, they're going to have a modern facility running on a gas line. Um, they the we understood they did not actually have the commitment from the bank yet in the, the commitment letter. They had an oral commitment. And then they actually had to change the commitment once to satisfy concerns that it was purporting to mortgage cemetery property, which or, or present cemetery property as collateral, which is obviously not okay. Um, somehow through the process, we understood that the loan was going to be a 10-year fixed uh, loan 
of at a fixed rate of 4.25%. Turns out that the first year of that loan for, I guess, for construction mobilization was in a different form of lo loan, and it was a variable rate of between 4. Point I think it's more complicated than the actual document, but in English it's between 4.25 and 5.25%. Potential so the potential impact is, impact is right. Uh, that doesn't change our over. We have not done a new fiscal on it, but that doesn't change the long run. Our in the long run, our overall analysis of the project, we would have recommended approval anyway. What was the total cost of the original? I, you know, I don't have a sense of scale. I don't recall. Do we have the original report in here? Yes. yes. That it be included in that. Yes. Okay. Well, I'll tell you. The original. Yes. Where is it? Hmm. 1.084, 1 1.09 million, right. so right um, uh, of which the loan, however, is 1.3 mil because they're also taking out an existing loan that's on significantly less favorable. They, they're, they're not taking out. They are uh, replacing, folding into this, the refinancing of an existing loan that's at significantly less favorable terms. All right, so the reason I mentioned this in response to your suggestion on the table, the, um, the appropriation, this is, this is a similar situation, isn't it? Because we don't know. We don't know. It's speculative to say what the interest rate's going to be for that first year of borrowing. Because uh, I, think, I think you were very careful to say if they borrow right away and for the first year, right? So isn't this the same deal? The problem is yep. their bank wants something from us yep. saying that the board has approved them of, in the form of up to 5.25% in this variable loan product. It has to, it's not good enough. That's fine, but we don't, but again, you table the appropriation, you see what the... What the There's no appropriation. This is them spending their of own course. money. Of course, yes. Never mind. But we can't just say it might not be, it might no, not end up being more because the bank wants something right. from us. Well, do we have the language of the board's order? Do we have the board order in the project? Well, actually, it's, we have the board's le we well, have a letter. I did. There's no board order because it's a uh, major reno. The board's uh, we only do formal board orders when there's uh, money. Our money. Yeah. Okay. This is our letter. What's your major? I mean, it doesn't require much of an amendment. No, it does not. It does not. Again, if the bank's lawyer wasn't being a stickler about this, we, I wouldn't have even bothered you guys. I would have just said, fine, do it. What does the bank want? They want something from uh, our letter talks about a loan at a fixed rate of 4.25%. Right. The bank, a motion the bank is yeah. the uh, modification? Yes, yeah. and then I can write them a new letter. Okay. All right. Want a motion? I move to uh, approve the modification. All right. The, uh, of the application from uh, the Woodchuck Cemetery. Second. Well, close enough. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 And, you know, it occurs to me that um, although we dealt with um, Whispering Maples quite expeditiously, we do have Whispering Maples here. David, I just want no, to, before, no, before we, but what's that? No, before <laughs> we move away from it completely, did you have any, any comments? I did. If I could just address Mr. Wild's concern about uh, the change order. Yeah. I think um, just as the chairman noted, this was, this was a very large project. Um, when the review was oh, done did of the systems by the engineers, it was more of a structural this, this was last year. Uh, review and then what the replacement know. was. In the instance of the garage, we recall that the board authorized uh, the removal and replacement of the garage with essentially a kit, um, which is pretty standard. It has the power. I mean, the power was already existing to the building. Um, what they didn't know was that there was deficiencies in the actual lines and still that, until they started to have the electricians on site and reviewing it. Same thing was true when the electrician showed up on the Mazo uh, problem at Ellenberg. And the same thing with... Plattsburgh. What we've discovered is that while there was electricity uh, going to the mausoleum in Ellenburg, which is what you proved today, and the one in Plattsburgh, they were not hooked up correctly. In fact, in the Ellenburg uh, mausoleum, as you know from what you proved today, there's actually not even a grounding wire. 
associated with electrical installation. So none of this meets code. All of it's dangerous. Um, I think the reality of the, as I heard the Snickers, the, you know, it, it's kind of the, uh, the rural fix. If you don't have a telephone pole, you string it through a tree is really not appropriate. Um, but it really goes with what we've seen at this facility where repairs were done. I've seen uh, personally where they wanted to put in new outlets, so they just cut the electrical line and patched in lead cord to get around a corner and then put an outlet in. So all that is being replaced in rural code, and I think that's the key thing. So we're not, so far we haven't experienced really large change of orders, and we're really going to get the final stretch of the project at this point. It's going to be done when? Hopefully by June. Yep. The receivership expires in June. It was extended by your office, and uh, you know we hope to have it completely wrapped up by now. Extended by the court without objection by us. Yeah. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right. So fish kill. No, pine planes. I mean, pine planes. Oh, pine planes first. Absolutely. Okay. 27.55 prefab. They have some experience with this. This is the um, third one in line. Can you tell us, somebody tell us about, you know, their experience with the first two in selling, you know, where they are selling out and what kind of time period it was to get there? Um, let's see. I think the last... I have, I have, Got from their report from the last one. They're, I think, 80% sold. They had real concerns because they had been selling them quite a bit last year. Mm -hmm. uh, the last one was installed, I believe, in 2005. Right, so it's about 13 years. So here's my question 13 years, I guess the less desirable, in what 20% is still fit. 20% is not a little bit. I mean, it's fit with the stuff. Uh, why wouldn't that be sold out? Uh, does that indicate that they're going to have trouble selling in the new one? I mean, is this an issue? That wasn't, that's not what my understanding was. I think they discussed it in the minutes as far as, uh, let me get the minutes. Well, I know in a mausoleum, you basically never sell the last 5%, uh, but when you're down to about 20%, you can run into an issue where you don't have companion niches in a desirable spot. You're already going to be essentially cutting into your own sales because so of the limited we, inventory. So we do our, our revenue expenditures in these things. Are we taking into account that, in fact, there's always going to be or anticipated to be unsold spaces? We don't. Business? Maybe we Why should. Not? Yeah. Because that's... Okay, well, that's, that's, that's in a mausoleum. Don't, don't yeah, yeah right. that's in a mausoleum. I'm not no, sure. I, th I think we have in the past. That's not always <coughs> true in a home barium. It's definitely true in a mausoleum. Sometimes. Okay. There's, there's, and look, that's not an exact number. Sometimes it's less, sometimes it's more. But there, the last five percent is the hardest to sell. The, uh, the, the, uh, the meeting at which the uh, board discussed this, the president said uh, the issue of the potential need soon for a column barium was presented. We only have 20 available niches. Cremation is becoming more popular all the time. Dick Williams also spoke about this change in the business landscape. We probably have enough until May of next year. All right. And this is a <clears throat> this was a planned phase. They, right. they intend to have four mm -hmm. shaped kind of like a cloverleaf, um, and it's already more or less landscaped for that. You mentioned in, in, in the summary that the service charges were high. Estimates high. What I didn't really understand what, what was meant by that. Well, I think that's <clears throat> they're capable of having two urns per, per um, niche. However, not everyone buys two, so they right. have the option. So there's a range. The minimum will be if they sell nice. everything, it'll be 400 times 64. <laughs> but the higher end of that would be twice that. But that's not a guarantee. So I don't want to use that number. So the total projected revenue of 6,800, what are they, well, I'm, and I should have done the homework myself, sorry. What are they projecting for that? Uh, well, I didn't really understand that question. So the total revenue, the total anticipated revenue is $60,800. Right. I'm just saying, what were they using for the 
for the that, placement of the urns for that. There, that's not included in the placement of the urns. That's that. just for the that, sales. That, that, that was just the pure sales. Yes. Okay. The next, okay. the next one, fifty-one thousand two hundred. That's that's the four hundred dollar fee. This is on um, Chris's room. <coughs> I guess I should on this idea. one, Dan, I can answer your question from before about why don't we do this. We typically do have a calculation where we estimate, well, in the past, you might have had, um, they, they typically get like half of them are doubles and half are singles, and we calculate it based on that. Um, that's usually with a larger project where there's more of a track record. And this could be high. Okay. Well, Where is this? That return is enough cushion in there. But if that <coughs> doesn't come through, it's still going to be a good investment. Okay. Plus, it's important. I've got table talk, but I have no idea. Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, that's all right. I have no problem with table talk. So what's the... Well, if that was high, if that number of those uh, inurements is high, there, it's a 28% return. So there's enough Absolutely. margin in there that if that doesn't come through, it's still going to be a good return. And their sales did drop in 2016, and I believe due in part that they didn't have the inventory. So, what's the um, projected rate of sell-off for this? You know, there, years, we do it on years. ten years. We base it on ten years, and we think that's going to happen. Last one was 13, right? But it's only 80 percent sold. But cremations are on the rise, and I think that demand will. It'll probably take 10 years. It's not going to lose money. You know that. No. <laughs> no, they'll get the money back. Yeah, I think if this were a case where the cemetery is looking for a PM loan, that's generally where we would look to uh, take into account the percentage that generally is difficult to sell or is left unsold. So that we make sure that the PM fund is paid back in a timely fashion. Also, uh, as Joe said, normally the, it's like a, an average of a 10-year period to sell out. Uh, for PM loan paybacks, we'd probably look for a tighter payback period of eight, eight years. But also, too, we, we moved away from uh, an additional percentage of sales to pay back the PM to straight monthly payments more of a, a mortgage or a loan type arrangement. But we do expect that the PM loan would be paid back in eight. But a cemetery that has like a marketing plan uh, has been known to sell out mausoleum spaces in under 10 years. So that's why if it was a PM loan, we'd have a tighter time frame. As this is not the case, you know, it could be 10 years, it could be eight or it could be 13. So, okay. and those spaces that are never, or difficult to sell, hopefully ultimately would sell, which is just, you know, Additional money. Very good. Uh, right. Did they need a um, a fee application? Are they changing their rates at all? Are these the same as what they it's had? The same as they had. Okay. Yeah. And the other thing is, there. Uh, <clears throat> this was submitted in the fall, and they didn't get their notices up until February first. That's what the delay was. So. Okay. Any uh, approval should wait until March thirty first to be effective. Because they have 30 days, well, more than 30 days left on their uh, comment period. Days. Well, no, they, well, they started it already. Right. Then, then it's so it's not a full 60 days, but then it's a contingent approval. Right. right, exactly. Right. So it would also be contingent on if there's any significant opposition. Yes, that right. It comes back. Right, exactly. Uh, questions, comments? Since there's a contingency, I'll. I'll just throw it out there. Uh, move to um, approve the uh, project as set forth in the application, contingent upon uh, no significant uh, opposition to the building uh, as set as um, in response to the cemeteries posting as required by regulations. So moved. Oh, you move it. You're I moved it. You want a second? second? Okay. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Great. Finally, I've said it twice now. I'll be ready for Fishko. Yep. I'll leave that for you, Lewis. Okay. We are. <coughs> Len, you want to? Alicia, you guys want to do this? Fishko, they're looking to build a mausoleum. They're just current mausoleum is 
um, you know, running out of space, but as we just talked about, it's the less desirable crypts remaining in the current mausoleum. So they're uh, down to 28 crypts left in the, in the current mausoleum, so they want to build a new mausoleum. What was the size, the total size that old one? I don't have the square footage. It's a couple hundred. Not in the size. What are the 400 left? I mean, it's just number of units. Mm. It's decent Crips. sized. So I have that here, but I'm not seeing it. I've been in it a couple of times. It's pretty deep. It's pretty decent size. Okay. Relative to the size I mean, of the 20, 20 20 we'll places. Is, is well, they're building 192. I wouldn't surprise me if the existing one was similar in size. Okay. That sounds – I don't know where I got 400 from. That sounds about right. All right. Uh, the, the new mausoleum will, will have 192 single clips, 180 tandem, 12 triple, oh. and no. – uh, No, that is where I got 400 from. 80, that right. 80 niche, uh, granite niche space and uh, 124 glass front space. Yeah. Uh, and the are going to build it so that if they want to extend and build another – uh, I'm asking at a future date they will have that ability. Um, we're looking to spend a, a approximately $1,300,000 total, uh, total estimate, a little bit shy of that. And uh, uh, it appears that, that everything is in place as far as uh, meeting the requirements uh, until 1.11. Uh, uh, as far as the uh, the um, financing goes, I'll have to refer to Alicia on that end of it. So they're looking to get a permanent maintenance loan of $500,000. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, they are going to, they're estimating that the pre sales will be around $600,000. So uh, a lot is contingent on the pre sales. Uh, they're also going to give a non secure line of credit up to $500,000 at 4.75%. I'm assuming that they're not going to tap into that unless that's absolutely necessary. I mean, the big picture, I just want to – I know you had some – No, I just want to clarify. I just want to make sure the board understands that um, as I read the papers, they're not going to tap into the line of credit unless the uh, pre-construction sales are slower than they anticipate, mm -hmm. and therefore the, it doesn't generate enough funds to meet the construction payments. I mean, all I want to say is sort of big picture. They, um, I think they struggled in the past, in the medium distant past, but – since in the period we've captured here, 2012 to the present, they've done, with one slightly fallow year, which they made money in, they've done quite well. They've got an active board. They have an active sales program. The place is well run. It looks good. They have a vision for what they're doing. So the big picture is their overall cemetery that we're comfortable that they know what they're doing. Yes. How did the sales on the currently existing uh, They've averaged around $135,000 the past five years. Mm -hmm. They're projecting higher sales than that because they're going to have more desirable spaces. And then when, when did do you, do you know when that one first went up? I, it's got to be between 10 and 15 years ago. I would say yeah, in, 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 the, yeah, in the 90s. Is that old? I would have thought early 2000s. We could ask them. You know. Yeah, they're available by phone. I think we have, I mean, they're confident this is going to sell, obviously. When, when we have, I'm not concerned at this point, but when we have existing structures there, it would be helpful to really have a handle on how it sold, you know, what the rate of sale was over the number of years, because that is, that, that helps us to understand that, in fact, they have, you know, a history and their prognostication of success can be supported. Well, we do have the rate of sale over the last five, five years, years because yeah, that's how we calculate it. And if anything, that's probably lower than what they were I, doing before that. I think that. that's true. Yep. And just to be clear, um, Division did its calculation based on the lower numbers. Correct. In addition yep. to the cemeteries. Rosier. Right. We, we use the lower numbers just because we want to be conservative about so this that. in light of the fact that there's a PM loan. Yep. Alicia, do you know how much they're paying their officers and directors? Their officers and directors. Negligible, I believe. Okay. I don't know if I have that on top of my head. 
This is not a cemetery like, this is not a Pine Lawn or a Greenwood where they have a large and well compensated staff. Um, or directed. Did this go to everybody, the, the breakdown of the administrative expenses? I think so. I think it's right. not just everybody. Was this? Should I think be there. I think it, as I should be one of the tabs. It was actually within the text of an email, so. No, but it should be in one of the. It should be in one of the tabs as well. If all the salaries are in that first heading, their yearly salaries are about fifty. They're now fifty-one thousand. Right. I think they're. I think they're. If their board. If their board takes any compensation for meetings, I think it's a. It's a token gratuity. I did have some questions about some of, the, some of these ads. I don't know if you've heard back on the I email. did. Okay. I did on that email that they sent me. Um, you had questioned the 2012 license and fees. Yeah, 13000 compared 13, to. That was when they had done their expansion project. <clears throat> um, when they first started build, when they first started the process of developing the new section? Yep, uh, 2500 of that was permit fees for the expansion and a $10,000 escrow payment to the town of Fishkill for engineering fees. Oh, okay. That would cover it. It took them a long time with the town. Yeah, that was agonizing. Um, I know the 15000 other administrative expenses, they, they had just sent me an email before I came up here saying that they were researching that. Okay. So. I also noticed that they, they pay uh, commissions to salaried employees. Is that the way they sold before? I don't think so. I think they used a sales force, but um, that was before my time. And then they're also going to pay marketing costs on top of that. They're going to pay commissions to their in-house people. Right. Ten percent of sales, and then they have they have a pre-sale marketing campaign that they're developing. Providing brochures, uh, getting the word out that this mausoleum is going up. Our concern with that was to make sure that the people who are in the marketing program were not actually selling graves and getting commissions because that's illegal. Right. They assured us, no, this is a marketing firm. Our employees are going to be doing the selling. Right. I have a. It's going to betray my ignorance. I just don't understand it. We have one sheet which talks about planned inventory and, and total sales based on 2018 prices only, and it's got about three and a half million dollars. And then we've got another chart which shows projected revenue for sales of the unit, totaling 2.1 million. And I'm sure I'm reading this totally wrong. Or apples and oranges, but I don't understand what the distinctions are. So I'm looking at the FRC mausoleum number three repayment plan. That's exhibit D. Okay. And then I'm looking at the FRC mausoleum oh, sorry. three attachment. Oh, sorry. It's exhibit C and exhibit D. Like, what's the difference in the numbers? Why are they different? Does C have our adjustment in it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, C was resent. So there was the, as um, uh, Tony had pointed out, we used the, the lower projection of $135,000 per year. So that's actually this. I believe we. So C, us, and D, them? Well, is that what we're saying? Well. The top portion of C is them, but then I created a lower spreadsheet with the lower. That's this. Numbers. This which is them. Have, this which was I this. don't have. Okay, it was a circulated right there. You have so it's your it's your number that has projected, but I can't. That one hundred fifty-five thousand dollars. So the question is, how does this tie into this? I don't have the other one. What There's the date. Take. You know what? Why don't I get why don't I get these two? You see my circles because. I am not smart enough to articulate my problem. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So long as we went with the lower number and it all makes money, do we have a problem? Yeah, and I just want to understand what, what we were given. That's all. See, I think. I believe that the this is based upon total inventory. But then that this is based upon ten years. 
Right. Ex exhibit D. I see. Right. So the lower number is 10 years sale, and then the 10 year inventory would account. I think you're missing my. You're missing this, I think. You need this one. Yeah. This was sent later. The bottom row. Is uh, the bottom row is us. The more conservative yeah. calculation. Or anything else? All right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yep. See when we the problem is when we see send, why I was confused. When we <laughs> send one of the, Dan, when we send one of these packages, oh. we don't remove anything from what the cemetery yep. submitted, even if we don't agree with it. Right. Because they may want to it may become relevant to something. We want to present the application as made, but we did our own more conservative calculation because Okay. Yeah. You know. Okay. So I have a couple yeah. Um, there's reference to uh, issue regarding restricted trusts. Can you explain that? Um, they have a series of, of special trusts established in time immemorial that they have been looking to go to court to get rid of, roll into permanent maintenance, do something with. Is actual trust set up for a specific just, grades? My understanding is they're specific trusts. They have various different terms, okay. some of which they're even unaware of the terms because they know they have a trust account, but they have, they are unaware of the trust instrument. They have been unsuccessful in trying to work with your office on this, Chris. This, oh, is, is, this is an attorney general matter. Success? This is an attorney general matter. It's nothing we can help them okay. with. They have, to, right. they have to go to court, and they're going to have to put the AG on notice. They haven't wanted to just go to court. And my understanding is they haven't wanted to just bring a lawsuit as long without as having the AG looped in first. Right. That, that That's my concern, that they're honoring the trusts while they try and get well, part of the pro They're not going to touch them at all because they don't know what the terms of the trust are, so they're not quite sure what to do with some of them, okay. which is why they're, they want to go to court. Right. So and nobody is that Others of them, there are trusts that are specific to graves. Some of them, if I recall correctly, are uneconomical at this point. The fees are just eating them up. Others, I think, may actually be generating more money than they need for care on that grave. Either way, their 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 big picture goal is to do away with all of these trusts in a court for the ones that they're not in touch with, I should say, mm -hmm. in a court proceeding and roll it into PM. Mm -hmm. But this has been a goal for since I've been here and it hasn't happened. Right. My second question was on uh, the contract with the company that's going to do the work. There's a page called Owner's Responsibilities. There's a lengthy list of things that the owner the cemetery is responsible for, which the cost of which could be significant. I was just wondering if those costs were factored into the analysis or whether we're just going based on the contract price. Where this the is exhibit. Section? No, I've got the exhibit. Which section is it? It's got the heading owner responsibilities. Owner it's, responsibilities. Got a, it's got a, what article is it? It's page four or five, exhibit B. Uh, where the hell is that? Here's page four. I see a building. Oh, yeah. oh, it's an exhibit. Okay. Here it is. No, that's not it. I just put it to us. What's the question? To I you? believe. So, so, like, um, number three owner to provide and pay for electrical service. <laughs> uh, owner to pro uh, number four owner to provide uh, for water service number five uh, responsible for all building permits and related costs testing inspection fees assessments and taxes uh, site plan number six um, so uh, owner responsible for cost of installation of all utilities um, so there's a lot of costs that aren't included in what the contractor is going to provide and I was just wondering if those were Factored into this. No. Okay. Do we want to ask them how much those are all going to add up to? Yeah. They probably have a sense. I think we should. Well, why don't we finish if you have any other questions? That, that's, that's it. That's, that's, that's let's call them. There you go. Uh, it's 845. Actually, you know what? I don't know if this is a um, if this is a personal cell phone or something, so I'm not going to read it out loud. Okay. Your style. To add to what Tony just said, that there's also a series of extra costs that are cited as possible. You know, I don't know how much that would add to the Let's take total. Through. Ask the question. Okay. Yeah. Which page is that on? Exhibit don't lose D. the other page. This is Hugh we're calling. 
Hi there, welcome to the cemetery board. <laughs> yeah. How are you? Good morning, good morning. Good morning. John Romano here. John, I should warn you, you're, uh, you've got the entire cemetery board. This is being live cast across the internet and you're being recorded for posterity. Lovely. There you we go. Have video, huh? Uh, we, we have video we now. We have video. We're, we're in the late 20th century. <laughs> so, so we had a, uh, a couple questions for you, and um, I'll let the, the direct questioners interrogate you. <laughs> Tony, Tony. <laughs> but, but, what was your issue? Hi, Mr. Romano. Tony Malillo. I'm counsel to the cemetery board. Hi, Tony. Uh, so my question uh, revolves around uh, one part of the contract with the contractor. It's, um, it's Exhibit B. It's page four of five. It's called Owner's Responsibilities. And it's a laundry. Um, yes. Uh, can I make one request? Sure. Um, we don't have Sterling Gaston uh, on this call. Could we get him on the call? Oh, sure. sure. Do we know how to do that? Are you going to be able to do that? or? Uh, Alicia, do you have his number there? I have his number, but I don't know if I know how to do this conference. Me, do you know how to do it? Let me see if we can find uh, it. Only because Sterling and that, in that contract are almost synonymous. Okay. <laughs> and who is he? Yeah, we have conference. So yeah, here we go. Hold on. Okay. Your call has been forwarded to an automated voice messaging system. Underwater. <laughs> wow. <Yeah>. Eight, <laughs> four, two, eight, seven, five. Is not available. No, the other number. How do I? At the tone, please record your message. Back to... When you finish recording. There. Hi. Hi. We love. We we we. He didn't pick up at the number I had. Let me try a different number. Wait. What's the? Oh, that's, that's. Oh wait. That's still on. That is the number I just dialed. Yeah. yeah he's. It went straight to voicemail. Oh dear. And I can't say. Uh, I don't want to say out loud the number because this is being recorded and broadcast. It might be a personal number. Um, could I suggest you just call the cemetery because he's there? Okay, what's what's the number at the cemetery? You can say that out loud. Yeah. Uh, eight four I, I five. Can. Hold on, wait, wait. I got it. Hang on. Eight nine six six two two seven. That's correct. Okay, hold on. Who knew that? Uh, it was the techno wizard. There you go. <laughs> I know how to make conference yeah, calls. Many many <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Fishkill Cemetery. This is John. May help you? Hey, good morning. It's uh, the entire state cemetery board in a cast of thousands looking for Sterling Gaston. Okay. Your audience awaits you. Hold on. Thanks. <laughs> okay. She's getting him. Uh-oh, I think we've stumped their technology. Hello? Hello there. Yes, hi, Sterling. Hi. Hi, hi, welcome to the cemetery board. Uh, Thank you. This, this is Dan Shapiro, chair. As Lewis always says, you're being telecast live now and recorded for posterity, so be careful. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we had some questions about uh, potential expenses, uh, contractual and otherwise, and, and Tony Malillo, our counsel, is going to lead the discussion on that. So, Tony, go ahead. Okay. And just to let you know, John Romano is also on the line. Okay. Hello, John. Hi, Cyril. He's been warned also. <laughs> Sorry. <Yeah. laughs> All right. Uh, so I'm looking at the contract for the project. It's Exhibit B, page 405. It has the heading Owner's Responsibilities. Okay. Um, there's a laundry list of things there that are not included in the, in the project, and that would be the cemeteries uh, – Require, cemetery would be required to pay the cost of these items. And my question is, have those costs been factored into this project? Um, I, I, I think I can answer that. Um, the, the contractual amount is, is in fact, um, less than the amount um, that we put forward as the total project amount. And the, uh, the difference being... Um, 
items outside the contract, road and land development, and these items that are talked as owner responsibility. That's good. So, so all those items you you anticipated and put in your projected expense. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Wonderful. And uh, Paul, did you have something? Or is I that was just answered? looking at Exhibit B. Um, this is Exhibit B to the contract again. Preliminary specifications and under site work, it has a list of items for which they say there may be extra costs. Um, I don't know how much the total of all of those extra costs might amount to. I don't know if they're significant or not, but if, uh, under site work, there's extra costs cited for removing rock formations if necessary, subsurface conditions, um, uh, civil engineering drawings might be possible, might be necessary. Um, over on, on uh, number four under concrete, maybe extra charges there. Um, and then also got, could, uh, on the next page under general items, if union labor is required, there shall be an extra cost to the contract. It's difficult to know what the total of all of these possible extra costs <coughs> might be and if it's significant or not. Well, I guess also relevant to these is, are any of these events more than remotely possible? I mean, what are the odds of any of these things happening? Well, the, to, to respond to the site work, um, the site is actually within plus or minus six inches of grade uh, in, as it stands right now. So there's no major excavations that are going to be needed um, with the exception of putting in the road, which we've included in the cost of the, um, of the uh, job as a separate line item in our presentation. The excavating contractor uh, just successfully completed uh, our expansion up on the hill. Uh, the original contract was $389,000 to to grade and uh, put blacktop down for uh, uh, 1,700 graves, and they've essentially completed it. We have two open items uh, right now that are minor, and they brought the contract in at 345,000. So there's about a uh, a $50,000 savings. Uh, in working with that contractor, which we're, cho we're also choosing to use to build the road, and McCleskey is going to use them to do the excavation work. So uh, we have a long history over the years with this contractor, and uh, he works very well with us. So I don't anticipate under the, the site work any surprises. The civil engineering costs um, are outlined in our presentation, I believe, um, but um, we've gotten those numbers and incorporated those into uh, uh, our cost to, to complete the job. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, it, all right. Why don't you hang on while we continue to discuss your project? And feel okay. free to interject okay. if uh, any other uh, no. Conversation on this? No. I mean, just just to be clear, our recommendation is contingent on uh, three things. Number mm -hmm. one, the completion of the 60-day comment period with after posting the sign uh, in compliance with the regulations without significant adverse comment. That's number one. Number two, as with any such project, receipt of local approvals. Number three, to the extent they are seeking a PM loan you are going to make a recommendation only, and that recommendation would be further contingent on Council's satisfactory review of a petition for those funds, uh, of a court petition for those funds, since we do not actually have a draft petition. Yep. Understood. <laughs> I'm just telling him for when he makes the motion to make sure that... Before I make the motion, we have an eight-year payback on this, right? Mm -hmm. that's all. That's all set... All and the to? petition will, uh, sorry, the petition, the draft petition won't we'll be satisfactory that. to council unless it has a payback schedule. It's, the PM loan amount is what? 
500,000. And the monthly payments that division has recommended are? Was 5,000. $22. $5,022 per month. Okay. Which constitutes an eight-year payback. Okay. All right. Um, by chance, did we get in the minutes Lewis's recommendations? Well, you still have to make your motion. I will. Because what I'm going to say is... What he said. Basically, <laughs> I'm going to say that... Uh, I'll, I'll just... Re I remember that. what I said. I'll, I'll tell Chad. That, that uh, motion to approve, contingent upon um, uh, no significant adverse comments with respect to the comments as required by regulation from the lot holders. Uh, if such comments appear, then the division should bring that back to the board. Uh, as always, contingent upon local approval. Um, and that's the first part. Right? The second part will be the recommendation to the court for the PM loan. But the first part is just that. So that's my motion. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Great. Second part is to recommend to the court um, approval of the PM loan, contingent upon council's review of the petition. Uh, and in accord with the representations made in the application and the divisions, view that are off of an eight-year payback of the PM loan for $500,000 at $5,022 per month. May I make a correction on that? It's $5,208. 5208 Which is exactly the number of feet in a mile, correct? You know, you took out my $200 a month fee for this. I don't understand. Right. <laughs> okay, as I mentioned. You're on record. It's close. Yeah, right. <laughs> that would be too much for coincidence. Um, that is a motion. Do I have a second on that? Paul, second. Paul, second. second. All right. Right. Great. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, thank you. Okay, you'll, get, you'll get a letter. I don't think you'll need it. Sorry, you'll get a letter, if not this week, by Monday. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Take right. care now. Right. Bye bye. All right. Uh, next month's meeting. Let's do a date. The current proposed date is March 26, 2018. Originally, we had proposed to have the meeting in New York City. Um, we are looking as a division to economize on travel expenses, yep. and me coming here is cheaper than y'all going there. So uh, I would suggest that we keep that date to come up here yep. instead. Mm -hmm. Is everybody okay with March 26th at 10.30 here in this very room, which I've already booked? As long as you bring some dim sum. I can, <laughs> I I can try. Okay. <laughs> He's got to bring some what? Dim sum. I'm trying oh, to know. I can try. <laughs> Uh, fine by me, Lewis. So it can't be local dim sum? <laughs> no local dim sum. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk. I won't say anything about our local cuisine. All right. Mayor Koch would have had something to say about that. Mm -hmm. Yes, he did. Kingdom dresses, yes. Um, 326 at 1030? Yep. All right. In this good? very Everybody? room. Okay, great. So before you return, can I return to uh, legislation? No. Please. <laughs> <laughs> I think he should. What did, what did we mean? So the, the Bill Lewis mentioned actually is, is in the report. It's oh, number 19. Oh, wow. yeah, I, I don't know why we couldn't find it. I know and it. just to clarify, it passed the Senate last year, but it died in assembly. So as of this year, it oh. has not passed either house. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. My bad. Okay. okay. Very good. Tell me, what about the one where the community foundation is able to invest? <laughs> that, that's, there's no same as, is there? For which... Which one? His or yours? Assembly <laughs> Member Gunter's bill. Uh, let me find it. Oh, it's the very first one. No, there's no same as, and nothing's happened in the uh, Assembly. And nothing's happened in the last few years on that one. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think it's very popular. Right. That's it. Thank you. Okay. Cool. All right. So, having come to the conclusion of our public session at this point, um, I will move to go into executive session for investigative and litigative matters. I will second that. All in favor say aye. 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 Don't we want to hear from the public? Let, you're yeah, absolutely we, right. I did that, and we'll hold that in abeyance. We've already approved. 
contingent and now, upon <laughs> contingent <laughs> upon public, <laughs> public uh, would anybody care to address the board? Anything? You have to expect a look on your face, David. Go ahead. Um, just, I actually would like to comment on the legislative report and yep. uh, the community foundation bill, and just to be clear that uh, NISAC actually opposes that legislation uh, specifically, which will be of interest to Mr. Wiles, because um, the way the, the community foundation uh, funding works and oversight is that right. the cemeteries would be required to alleviate themselves of their fiduciary responsibilities, right. and the association opposes that uh, process. So while it, it's well meaning, um, it really misses the mark as far as statutory requirements. That's okay. it? Wow. Anybody else? <laughs> All right. So we've okay. already motioned to go into executive session. Let's take a five-minute break before we do that. And, and uh, check.
We're still oh, muted. Gosh. Now we're go. All set? Okay. Yeah, we're go. Motion to uh, exit executive session and then adjourn. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 aye.